Hello everybody, welcome back to another game. Um, this is game two in the series between TDK and Badami. Badami took, or, sorry, TDK took game one um, with a really cool form of special offense. It was like a uh, kind of like a half pass thing, the kind of thing that you thought you hadn't, you weren't going to come up against because baton pass got banned or whatever. But uh, TDK brought some sort of Lavos esque team. It's really really cool. Uh, what was it? Baton pass, roar, zap, filthy set. Um, but he made it work and um, gets that uh, got that very important first game. Uh, we'll see does TDK extend his lead or does Rick fire back, slick Rick fire back with one of his tricks. Uh, he is on top of the ladder at the moment as well, I'm, I'm informed, so he uh, is definitely on top of his game. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts uh, a good fight up here against TDK. Well, interesting, Rick's using sub vapor and he was uh, inquiring about that set recently. Um, about why it's good and I told him it's good because it comes in on Blissey like the, or Blissey comes in on it and Blissey can't break the sub here with Estos so now Blissey's forced to switch out because you've got a Fizz type behind a sub and Blissey can't risk getting focus punched so this is like a free turn for Badami if he has like a DD grass tar or something he can do some serious damage right now he does have DD I told him to pair this thing with grass if he pairs this with HB grass he's in business oh no that's disappointing that's disappointing yeah, um, now he's forced to switch out or at least, you know, trade because he's not going to win the 1v1. Yeah, he, he switches out, so that just wasted the free sub. And now uh, TDK is back in the driving seat here again. Vaporeon's not getting that 25% back. Um, or the 30% back, rather. Uh, it's not getting lefty, so it's probably a Salix set. Um, anyway, the Vapakuno lead Salix set, the best lead in advanced. Uh, Leech Seed comes out here on Fortress. Leech Seed doesn't mean... Uh, I'm going to pause it here. Leech Seed doesn't mean that you don't have HP Fire, but it significantly reduces the chances that you do. So um, it wouldn't be a criminal play for TDK to stay in here and fire off um, an Earthquake... Or sorry, not an Earthquake, a Spike. Or he could Earthquake predicting a Mag. Um, yeah, so one of those two plays is actually completely fine here. If he stays in, he does stay in, he just fires off that all-important Spike. Uh, that could be... Very important in this game. TDK looks like he's got a team that doesn't uh, have a spinner. He's kind of got a weird uh, baton pass oriented squad. Wow, a bit greedy here from TDK. He's going to fire off another spike. Doesn't have any means to break that sub, and uh, Vaporeon's getting that health back as well. Does he just fire off a Hydro or does he pass this? Um, he passes it. Part comes out. We're going to see a Mence come in. Is this a mixed Mence? How does he pressure both Bliss and part from here that's interesting he's gonna reveal wait well, he's not getting lefties and he's got earthquakes this is CB mess is this CB goes guard here and Rick keeps on EQing so he could easily be CB he's not leading usually you see CB as a lead because it's a great lead but uh yeah Rick just switches out that's a CB mess um, you have no proof of it but if you're switching out behind a sub, you're almost definitely CB. That's uh, that's very disappointing. That was the best thing he had versus a full health perch, a CB mens. That that kind of momentum just doesn't work. Um, maybe Rick just doesn't understand how that kind of momentum works. But if this if this is a pursuit tower right now, it's gonna chunk Celebi here. Um, not a pursuit. Well, it should be a pursuit tower. He goes for. A crunch, so he's a special variant of some kind. Yeah, you kind of need a pursuit tower on that team um, because you can't spin otherwise with Fari. Um, Badami makes a nice mag play here. Does it come in on Fari? It does. Uh, meta or mag or ugh, Fari, the obvious switch into meta there. Um, T bolt. Oh, you're gonna try and catch a Fari with a T bolt mag. You don't have HP fire. Uh, Rick is really, really reaching into the bottom of the cup here. He is reaching for. Uh, He's grasping at straws here. I mean, T Bolfari, it's still at 35. It's getting that high. It's getting an extra 6% back after this turn. Like, it still takes two or three hits from meta. Um, what was the point if you didn't even have HP fire? Your team just gets ravaged by Fari. Completely ravaged. That should definitely be a DD Grass Tar, especially because you've got two other physical variants here. Um, and it's also super Gar weak. I really don't like um, Rick's team. His, his team building has always been his downfall because he's a great player, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Does he get punished for this? No, Fari is paralyzed. It's paralyzed. 
So he's gonna get away with this. He's gonna get away with murder here. Um, gets to keep the full health mag, and also does not have to fight three layers of spikes. But we are gonna see the last here for GDK, and that is this is the worst possible matchup for Rick. Fari plus Molt. Um, he doesn't deal with either of those threats individually, let alone both of them at once. Um, Twenty-one percent here. Vaporeon will go down to another. Um, but is this the Salix set? Yeah, it is. So we're going to see, does Blissey come in? It does. Uh, this will wall Vaporeon, but does he pass the Salic out? He does. And we're going to see um, Metagross come in. Yeah, that's the beneficiary. That's what I've what I gone to as well. The only thing you can really pressure with at the moment. Um, Boom's here on the Bliss. Well, this game's going so fast. Maybe I should put it on really slow. But uh, that's huge. Even when you lose Bliss versus um, an offense, it's still huge just because Bliss is good versus everything. That's why it's one of advanced best pokes. Menz comes in here. Does he get the prediction right on the Gar? He does not. He brick breaks. Uh, Bad make, makes the safe play. I don't know, is that Gar bulky enough to live um, a plus one HP flying in sand? Probably not, I would say. Well, what's the. Uh, you need 250, 244, right? Or, or 248, 44, something like that. Um, yeah, 248, 44. Uh, if the Gar was not that set, he was going down there to flying. Um, but this, this time. Oh, this game's going so fast, I'm going to put on really slow. This time, um, Rick does get the prediction right here. He goes Brick Break on the tar. Um, so yeah, this is what CB Mens is so good at. Uh, it just, like, if it was Slide, it KOs Moltres. If it was HP Flying, it really puts uh, Purd in range of tar. If it was HP Flying on Gar, it might just kill it. So um, TDK was so unsure of what to do, so he actually ended up staying in with tar. Maybe... Uh, saw an earthquake coming or something like that um, and was trying to punish uh, Bad Amini for making that play uh, you know it, it, that's what Mens is so good for but when you're not leading it it's so hard to get it in um, and it, this team looks really slow sluggish, chippable really really don't like it um, it doesn't seem like the kind of team that's been tested very much um, anyway it is a 4-3 to lead, a four to three lead um, for Rick, so I, I shouldn't be running him down too much. He knows what he's doing. Mole comes in here. It's relatively free here. It's kind of got open season here. Um, I'm going to see what the TARS item is here. Uh, it's not getting lefties, is it? Or maybe we'll see now in a sec. Okay, so it is, yeah, it's the right set. DD um, usually has LUM because everything else on DD is usually pretty bad. Uh, it's just so prone to status otherwise. You can obviously fake LUM and have like Leech or uh, Salak or whatever, but uh, at least now we know it's Lum. Perk comes in here, it's the safe play, and uh, Badami makes the uh, very nice double here. Knows that Pert is the uh, the easy switch in, so he goes to Celebi here to punish that. Uh, are we going to see a seed, or are we going to see maybe a, a psychic to chip the molt or something? Um, probably a leech seed. Get that health back. Uh, it does just psychic into the molt, does 37. Rick's path to success here um, seems to be through the Celebi. Beats Pert, beats Gar, just doesn't beat Moltres. So everything he should be uh, focusing on right now is chipping Molt. Um, if he can take Molt out of this game, Celebi just wins. That's uh, definitely Rick's MO right now. Gonna get flamed into here. Um, again, though, there's just nothing that stops Pert from coming in. It is at 100%, so... You know, it, it's... This is the the great dilemma with Rick's team. It's just it's so easy to chip and he has no way of chipping the opposing team So the longer TDK can make this game last um, the better it goes for him Because switching around with the team like that's impossible. Rick didn't feel the uh, the safety there to just go Celebi um, Which would have been a huge play for him. He's gonna slide again here into the uh, The part probably predicting a Moltres there does get flinched, so he gets lucky about it. Um, I don't really think TDK has any reason to uh, to go multi. He could just Ice Beam if he has it here. Probably does, because he's got EQ Protect. Does he have Ice Beam? We'll see now. No, he EQs, okay. See, I would have Ice Beam there if I was TDK, because it's relatively uh, riskless, and you also kind of punish the Celebi for coming in to the point where it's no longer a threat anymore. Anyway, Celebi gets a free recover turn here for sure, and uh, TDK is obviously going to use that as the free opportunity to get Molt in, and as we've 
seen earlier, there is absolutely nothing on Rick's team that switches in. Uh, probably just going to sack the tower here. Uh, Mens can still break through. Um, whereas tower is useless, it's completely hard walled by Pert. The only purpose it actually serves is just to bait the Pert in so that Celebi can come back in. But he can't even do that anymore because Moltres is, as BKC to say, is the most oppressive mon in advanced. It, uh, when you pair it with spikes, especially a couple of layers like this, it's it's extremely dangerous. Um, there's just nothing that switches in comfortably, and uh, as you see, this tower is just sacked from 40% here. Um, and the thing is, the only mon that Rick can bring in here is Mens, um, and if that's Mens, that's if Mens even outspeeds. We're gonna see now does it outspeed speed in the sand? The sand will tell us all. Um, so. Who's, oh, Moltres is faster. This is a timid molt. So, this is huge. Um, wow, Wisp. I feel like Swampert was a really easy switch, I guess. He protected the HP flying because it was so obvious and Wisped. Yeah, that's a fair play, I guess. Um, you go Pert there, it's obviously the right play, but uh, then you have to kind of play around HP Grass Mag, so it'll be... makes the game a lot more tough, whereas if you just Wisp that, it's... Uh, it's... you know... Mens is completely out of action now because I, I think this game actually might be over now. Um, thing is though, if Mens slid there, uh, Rick just wins. That was the big turn, whatever turn that was, 34 I think. That was the big turn. That was the turn that allowed Rick to win this game. Now I think it's over because even if, um, let's say Perk goes down, Gar goes down, whatever, Molt's faster, outspeeds and Oko's does, or like almost Oko's, um, lives a Psychic, right? No, it doesn't live a Psychic. Okay, so what TDK's plan is now is to keep ice beaming like this so that uh, Celebi's in range or else just use guard to keep uh, keep Celebi in range I, it probably, Celebi probably is Oko'd after two spikes um, by Moltres, well actually no, Timid so no, um, definitely not but here's the thing Moltres outspeeds and after I mean after the burn damage there um, and the sandstorm damage, so that's what is it, 16% uh, from there. Uh, Mens is going to come in and it's going to be at, let's see, 28, 18. So it'll come in and it'll be at 18, which is definitely in range of flamethrower. So that basically means that Moltres outspeeds and Oko's everything in the game right now. Um, so Rick can't even HP grass there with the bird. He actually has to bring Celebi back in here. He needs to get it back to full health. So what actually what actually should have happened there is TDK should have been ice beaming rather than earthquaking um, because he has no reason to fear uh, the he has, he has no reason to fear Celebi if it's at sixty percent because Molt is going to outspeed an Oko um, whereas now it cannot and if it comes in it gets psychic and then um, there's actually a, a chance for say Rick to win with Mag or something um, but if I suppose if TDK can get the Mag to where Gengar beats it then this game's just over. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, again, that 68 is probably in range of uh, Moltres. So what Batami really needs to focus on is just getting the Celebi back. Now, both of these guys are definitely are going to be... Like, I'm going to pause for a sec. Both of these guys are definitely going to be in their calculators. Um, they've already been in their calculators, I'd say. And they're checking what does Timid Molt do versus Celebi. There's going to be 252 Timid. So 252 Timid versus whatever this is EV to be. Um, Team's relatively offensive, so it probably takes quite a bit from flamethrower. So at this point, say 62, flamethrower is definitely killing, which means that Celebi needs to get to a higher percentage of health before uh, he has uh, Barami has a chance to win. Which means, for example, if Gar was to boom, say now, the game's over. 68, you don't live a flamethrower. So Rick technically or 78, when well, he might live from 78, I don't know, but Rick uh, probably has to switch right now. Um, and if TDK does not go for Boom, which he doesn't have to, he can actually go for an Ice Punch here pretty freely. Um, Celebi still comes back in on two layers, so this game's actually over. No matter what Gar goes for here, um, it, it's over because Rick just doesn't live a single attack. And once he comes back in, he's going to eat two layers with Celebi. That's what, 16%. He goes down to 72, goes down to, what is it, 62? And he, he won't live another one. Um, so this game's over. Yeah, Boom. Doesn't matter if uh, if Rick had switched. Mens is going to come back in on 18. Uh, Molt's going to come in here and outspeed and kill. Provided Celebi is not some ridiculously high speed, which it won't be. 
Yeah, so Molt should just kill here. Um, doesn't matter, Rick's gonna sack Mag. Um, Mens needs to come in here, but we already discussed that it's coming in at 18, I think I said. Um, so it's gonna be at 18%, and Molt does like, what, 30 to Mens or something? It does like a, way more than 18, so... Um, and we already know it at speeds. Molt's probably roughly around 306 in speed, which is what it hits in Timid. Uh, so Mens is gonna take the Sand here, and it's not getting lefty, so... Takes the 6, and then takes 12, so it should go to 18, right? Or 15, oh, I miscounted. Oops. Math, uh, brain fart, but uh, it doesn't matter. 15, 18, doesn't matter. Mens is going down, and Salvi again is as bad in O code, so this game is over. TDK gonna take the, uh, gonna take the series. Interesting um, way that this uh, this kind of fell. Uh, this, ugh, what am I saying? This kind of game befell in an interesting. This series befell in an interesting way. Uh, but I mean, TDK, he's been top of the ladder now for a while, for quite a while, I think, and the ladder's been pretty active, so to be top of the ladder, you've got to be really, really good, like Rick's on top of his game, but what this tells me more is that, I mean, obviously Rick, you know, has been known to use crappy teams, and that's always been his downfall, um, but what this tells me, it really is TDK has been playing amazingly. 2-0 against one of the best in that bracket, in my opinion. Um, yeah, TDK has been on fire. Like the question coming in was always going to be, how does his obvious transparent skill in other tiers like Gen Seven, Gen Eight, whatever, how does that transpire? How does that kind of um, manifest in advance? Does it carry over? Can he integrate well? Um, and the answer clearly here is yes. Uh, he's played really, really solidly. That wisp on Mens was a huge turn. Um, the HP fine was so obvious, so he wisped. Um, but again, you know, it's it just comes down to to the those kind of plays and TDK's overall player ability really kicked in. Um, it uh, yeah, it, he definitely made the transition to advanced very smoothly. Um, I'm excited to see more from him. His advanced has been very very impressive, um, and I, I wasn't sure like I knew he was untested coming into this in advanced. Obviously not untested elsewhere. He was like the most expensive SBL player last year. Um, or this year, most recent year, but um, yeah, I mean, to do what you just did there to Rick, um, who's top of the ladder, just means that you're kind of a force to be reckoned with. Um, this might mean that TDK is one of the favorites now in Group B to go ahead and uh, and reach the finals of the play-ins. Um, yeah, really, really good series. Really enjoyed it. Um, I felt Rick was kind of let down by his own team usage but I guess that's part of the game hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next one